I made a Mandarin uh, Bavaria hop and Munich malt smash beer, which I fermented with SO4. I actually fermented out this beer in under two days and was ready to drink in day three, on day three. And there were some hiccups and that obviously led to the, the fast turnaround of this beer and there's also some hiccups because of Michael from Brewgoat, today's sponsor. So we have the beer in the kegerator and I have some brewing footage to show you and we're going to talk about hiccups and of course check out the recipe. Let's get into that! I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and home brewing. So if you want to learn with me how to become better at beer and home brewing, consider becoming a subscriber. Help out by liking the video, of course. Beer is pouring. What a beautiful pour. Okay, but before we taste and shake out the beer, Let's have a look how I made the beer. Over to the brewing footage. It's a beautiful day here in Sweden. This is just Munich malt. This is just Munich malt. The, all that I have, five kilos and 122 grams. If you haven't done a smash beer with Munich malt, try it out. I've made one before with Simcoe. Um, and I found that for a smash beer, this is a really good malt to use. Of course, uh, it will make like a orange beer. We get some bready notes, some melanodions. Sixty-five, but I heated up the water to seventy because yeah, I found that as the grains are colder, then the water will take the temperature down. Five degrees seems to be good. Five degrees hotter Celsius. Am I strong enough? Ugh. Let's hope so. Might need both hands for this. And if you just let this sit now for like, I don't know, 20 minutes, something like that. The grains will soak up the water. Or you can give it a stir now. Today, I think I'm gonna stir it. He's waiting for the spent grains. I haven't even mashed in and you're here already waiting for the grains. Can you please just hold on for just a little bit? Thank you. I will give this a gentle stir now really good crush on this i'm gonna let it sit now and i'll come back in like 50 minutes give it another stir some more insulation i've raised the temp up to like 75 76 measured in the uh, grain bed now it's time to take this up to boiling temperature but of course we need to raise up the, the grain and sparch it. And I'm gonna be a bit lazy today. We're gonna sparch it with tap water that's not heating up to like 78, which I usually do. Yes, straight out of the tap. It works. So I'm raising this up little by little. No need to do any more splashing than needed really. Do I need to scream to the camera when it's so far away? I don't know. Looks like this sparching will get over in no time. See I'm monitoring down here and this is held by this little lever. Nice. Can you call that lever? I'm trying to keep like an, an inch of uh, sports water on top of the grains and I'm trying to add it without too much splashing but I'm being a bit lazy today. So I will continue raising it up 
Uh, you don't need to see all of this. So now we're trying to get up to, woo, trying to get up to a boil. Okay, we're up to a boil. See this set timer på en timme. Jag har ställt timer på en timme. Tack. Okay, and he's eating up the spent grains, feeding my my forest. Sound effects. Gonna boil it for an hour. Won't add any. Uh, hops until flame out for this one. This is another no chill beer. That's the way I brew in the, in the winter time. I just think it's convenient for me. And I do like to skim this, but you know, you don't have to. For me it's satisfying. That's why I'm doing it. I will add some Prota Flocken yeast nutrient at 50 minutes. Almost had a boil over, of course, as usual. Boil has been going for like 45 minutes, so Let's add some Prota Flock and yeast nutrient. Still no hops. I'm gonna add this now to disinfect it. Mandarin and Bavaria, 3.7%. Oh! Super, super fresh! <laughs> ah! Can you smell it? Flame out! In goes the hops. That's 200 grams of hops. The dancing has started. I don't want it like splash it. But I do want the hops to collect in a beautiful cone in the center. So. Uh, I wouldn't use like a power drill, something like that. This is, you don't need to do any more than that. And that might, oh, I want all the hops to stay in there. That might be overkill also. And now the brew day is done. This is what I love about no chill. Now I can do some other things. I have a thumbnail to, to make and yeah, to create. So I'm um, just covering this up like that, put the lid on and tomorrow this, sorry, put the lid on, <laughs> beautiful. So nothing will get in here and uh, we can monitor the temperature there. Okay, Rudy. Done. I'm in the middle of a baking video, um, so it's breadcrumbs all over the place. But I need to rehydrate this yeast. No chill beer is ready to get into the fermenter. So, that, that's it. Yes. Okay, gonna go and get the yeast. So far so good, this is going well. Here comes the, the gooey part. I could shut off now, but yeah. I haven't found any issues at all. Is the wort a bit hot? Let's end it there. We got 24 liters. Nice. I'm gonna give this a blast of oxygen now. Just a slow pace for one minute. We're sitting in hot, we're like 30 degrees Celsius. The probe is insulated there. And now I'm gonna put 
pressure on here I'm going for 35 PSR 2.4 bars there let's dial in the spun it this spanning valve is like no other it costs a little bit more but yeah if you have one you know what I'm talking about let's dial it in so somewhere from there where should we put this? We should put it here. You have to move. Move it. Everything is done, but we are a little bit hot. But the fridge will take it down. But we are going to start it hot, as usual. But I was thinking that we should start it at 25C, not 30 to start with. Then, of course, we can just push it to start ramping the temperature up, up to 30, something like that. At least. Okay, as you see, we are a bit hot, but yeah, we'll be fine. The fridge will take that down. Maybe we could have started at 30. I might have to do that soon as, a, as an experiment. Anyway. Okay, so there you had some brewing footage called a porn if you want to and here's the beer it's a little bit darker than you see it really do I have a flashlight almost like out of batteries in this one something around that that should be more like the accurate color which I see you see now on camera it's not that dark it's not clear we have a two finger head that sticks on with Good peaks and valleys, white head, nice small bubbles. We have an orange colored hazy, good looking beer. Nice haze on this one. Caramelly notes on it. Yes, still. Do get some fruitiness. You, of course, want to say like tangerine or orange. So let's just dive in. Cheers. It's quite dry beer. It is a little bit too bitter. I'm gonna come to come to that. It is still good, but it's a little bit on the bitter end. So it's not like perfectly balanced. Um, they have a slight deacetyl, which I think is quite nice in, in this beer. I was aiming for like a like a British pale and I do get that vibe. We have some like caramel sweetness to it also. I don't get like massive tangerine, mandarin. Really want to to say that of course. Quite dry, a little bit on the, the bitter end, but really nice beer i will top it up and we will have a look at the recipe and talk about the mistakes and cool things we learned this was a no shill beer i have a video on no shill i can link to that below or you can go and search dr hans no shill the uh, recipe is already up on my Patreon page in the Dr. Hans recipe book. Uh, for you guys interested in more content, want to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon page. And now there also, as I hit just hit 10K subscribers, there was also a channel membership. So we're gonna explore that also, bringing more content to the people. Cheers. So you can go and check out that if you want to. I used five kilos and 120 grams of Munich malt type one. That was all I had. And I used 200 grams of Mandarin and Bavaria, which accordingly to my hop source was 3.7% alpha acid. I said, that's super low for being Mandarin and Bavaria. Uh, I thought they were more like seven, but no, I was sure. They should be 3.7%. And yeah, of course, there you had hiccup number one. But yeah, this turned out really, really good. So 
it's just a little bit unbalanced. So uh, I'm quite surprised actually myself that it, it didn't get worse than that from that massive difference. But of course, calculating from no shield is always like a guessing game. But as I said, I have a video on, on that. So you can go and check that out, how I do that. Michael from, from Brugot, you don't have to worry because I would never like say your name or blame anything on, on you. Uh, speaking of Brugot, today's sponsor. Brugot is a Swedish home brewery supplier with their physical store here in Stockholm, Sweden, but they ship like everywhere i think at least in like europe if you're ask them kindly so go and check them out first link in the description okay now when the bills are paid yeah let's get on with it like i said this was a no shield it was really cold the next day and um, so i put on the heating element and it got a little bit hot actually got it up to 30c but I'm always in for an experiment. So I pitched two packs of rehydrated SO4 in a 30C wart and the doctor, good doctor will translate that into Farna. Okay, and I set the fridge to 25, but of course it takes some time for the uh, temperature to go down and 25 is quite hot to start SO4 also on, but yeah, as I pitched this on, on 30, it's, yeah, it started off extremely fast and one and a half day after pitch fermentation was all over and I could actually see that the beer was clearing on top then you know its fermentation is over. I have a seat through fermenter. This was also fermented under pressure 2.4 bars. Cold crushed it and on day three it was a little bit more hazy but yeah was nice in juicy, a little bit more hoppy also. It's had the sitting now for a couple of weeks. I wanted to see if the bitterness died down a bit and it has. It was way more bitter at first, but of course it had more of those like say tangerine, mandarina notes on it when it was super fresh. I think it has been sitting now for like four weeks maybe. Another hiccup was my efficiency was way lower this time and I, I, I have no really explanation for what happened. Did I make a mistake weighing up the grains or I don't know, I'm not sure. I think I was down to like 65% efficiency. I normally hit 78 almost every time. So uh, yeah, I don't know. And of course that also makes the beer off balanced. So I had a weaker wort and I had a hop with more alpha acids than I have accounted for. Of course, I could have measured everything along the way, but yeah, I'm like used to my stuff, how I brew with my stuff. So I don't like measure everything every time because I have been brewing on this system for a very long time now. And yes, as you, if you follow my channel, you see my system are getting smaller because things are breaking apart. I don't have a pump anymore and uh, one of the handle or on the on the loose. I really need to get a new brewing system, but I want to get like a big brewing system. So I'm saving up for something like that because I really want to do like do split batch where we can try out a lot of more stuff. Yeah, that's what's up with that. And before you click off this video, don't forget to smash the like button and if you aren't already consider becoming a subscriber and follow my uh, adventure yes cool cheers guys and thanks for watching dog to hans out now check out this video